Salutations, my friends, and welcome back to TNO, which we're playing with Glenn! Heading for space. So, last time I asked you guys, at the end of the last episode, whether we should do a new republic or not, and we should go down these paths or any or stuff like this. Well, apparently, at the time of this recording, this is a little bit bugged, which is not good, because this was supposed to pop up as soon as the oil crisis started. So, at this point... Eh... Uh, let's go and just cancel it. We don't have that much time. It's already April 71. And I want to get through this as fast as possible. So, that being said, I'm not really sure if... I don't think Glenn can be a two-term president. So, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. But I do want to get down to the Eagle Has Landed. Down here, this isn't super important, at least in my opinion. We need it for support, but at this point, we're at 0%. Which kind of really, really sucks. But let's go ahead and do unkept promises for now, just to get it over with. After fighting constantly in regards to the re reformation of several pension programs, we've already made strong leaps into progress for social welfare programs in American society. However, every program created thus far has been aimed towards a specific group, and in time we looked outward into a social security program for every American citizen around the nation. My apologies about that, my cat wanted out of the room. The beginning of such a creation will act as a new means for providing the average man and woman and usher in a new wave of confidence and prosperity in a time of financial fears and instability. And in safeguarding Americans from financial failure and offering pensions and or provisions in the case of economic recession, we will put many Americans' fears of progress to rest and allow the American economy to expand as it has never has before. Yes, while well, it may, well, may be at the cost of government funding, is it not the the care and concern of the people that we are looking to expand upon in the first place and offer them happiness in such dire times we're going to gather support for the drafting and social security act dragging in our feet could have dire consequences public support will increase and republicans and democrats will grow a little bit more unified and get some political power so after that we will then i'm going to go fast down these paths as fast as i possibly can we can do a next gen unmanned mission we already have two unmanned missions we don't really need another one right now to be honest with you so we're going to go with that stuff so, I'm going to make a beeline for this stuff. Ooh, and actually, beginning the Social Security Act, huh? Oh, we have to get down there, though? Oh. Oh, then we have to vote for it. Oh, we got to probably move through this pretty quickly, then. Ooh, do we rally the Republicans? Republic support will increase, or... Ooh, we divided. Popularity of the Democrats will increase in the Midwest. Ooh, do we want more Republicans or Democrats? Let's see, our friends in the center... Support for the bill will increase among the center NPP, which is pretty good. We do want that. Both parties become more divided, which is fine. Or hold back the South. Do we want more Democrats or center NPP? Let's see. Because actually, last time we were, we got, you know, this was a bunch of crud when we did joint testing programs. Increase our expenditures by 250. Siphon money. Increases NASA's budget by 250. Uh, let's do that again, just because it just makes sense. 250 is not bad. We'll do that in a little bit, though, because we have enough money for now. 96, let's go launch Orion 3. Improve heat shields. Increase our base for preparedness for manned missions. Yes. Yes, that is very good. We have plenty of research points. So right now, there are 16 Democrats, 24 Republicans, 34 are Center MPP. All citizens are not Great! So really, we want to get the Center MPP and the Far Right. Those are the two that we want to help us out. Now, I doubt we could actually do stuff like that, but we'll see what happens mission rewards. we got 64 research points and 7 public support from unmanned mission. Great. Ooh, Day Dillis. It's a manned mission designed to explore our orbit, giving us an increase to the base preparedness for all missions. This will increase investment. This will invest 250. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. I think it's time we try this. Let's try it. 420, huh? How much do we get a day? Point, oh my gosh, 0. 0.12. Oh man. 40 million for 10. 25. I'm gonna go 50. 0%. Oh, that is so not ideal. Maybe we should have done more unmanned missions first. Oh my goodness. And of course, we have more debt every year, but whatever. Are we involved anywhere? Imperial State of Iran. The Arabian Republic is here. Yeah, don't want to get involved in places that we don't need to right now. Second Night of the Long Knives. Very cool. Life does not forget weakness. Oh. Huh. And there goes the Shah of Iran. Oh boy. Air Assault 4. Nice. Air Assault. We got that done. It's 71. Cool. 0%. Oh god. Hmm. Hey, 7%. Blueprints. 
I think we're pretty good on that stuff. Yeah. 42... 50 political power for 250 million. Or we do 40 political power for 150. Yeah, definitely do joint testing. Because over here you get 200 million. It's just so much better to do. There you go. Because last time we were supposedly caught that we were uh, spending money or misallocating funds. Which is completely false. It's In my opinion, like if we're doing joint testing, it's already the money's already in or earmarked for the army budget. We're just using the money that was earmarked. So. But that's just me. That's just me. Who am I? Except a guy drinking coffee with Glenn. That'd be really cool. Oh, Iran. The Iranian Civil War. In recent years, we've seen Persia become a wide breeding ground for oppression and ruthless authoritarianism during the rule of Pal Pahlavi. Pressures from Berlin and Tokyo caused a cave-in for the fragile political structure of the once proud nation. However, the people have started to speak out against tyranny and are shining opportunities developing itself right before our eyes. The National Front, or formerly outlawed under the Shah's one-party dynasty, has made a resurgence in the local population. Every class seems to show support, farmers, soldiers, noblemen alike. A surprise referendum directed at the parliament. The people demand free elections, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, among others. The result, over 200 th freedom fighters dead. Over a thousand wounded. Angered at the sight, democratic politicians continue to speak out against the Shah while building up a competent army in the southern half of the country, along with the Zagros Mountains and the Persian coast. A constitution was signed and the new Republic of Iran seceded only a few hours ago. Persia is a gate through which... The Caucasus, India, Central Asia, and the Middle East can be accessed. We also don't want the barbaric German eagle spreading its towns over the oil reserves in Iran. With a friendly government, any chance that the Germans have at filling up their panzers with Persian oil is slim. If the liberals win this conflict, they can be our experiment with democracy in a region and a beacon of hope for the peoples of the Middle East. We must be hasty, the fragile democracy is already on the defensive, yet another struggle for freedom is all we need. Cool. I guess, like with my... Ooh, we have some volunteers. With my... RFK campaign. I could send volunteers over here. But we'll see what happens. I want to patch social security first, and then we're just gonna focus on all this stuff. The question of boosters. Ooh. Liquid fuel. Increase the cost, but increase the base preparedness. And rewards. Ugh. Oh wait, we want to, wait, why did it cancel this? Wait, what? No. I, why does why, why, why does auto cancel that stuff? Come on. That should not happen. We we lost all that progress for nothing. I should have just got political power instead for that then. That's so dumb. So dumb. And we still have a mistrust of government, which really sucks. Military austerity. Well, that's nice and all, but... Nah, we good. They should be able to beat these guys without us, right? Right? Maybe, maybe not. We got enough naval XP. 34 billion a year in deficit. Whatever. The future generations can pay that off. They don't get promise. Because I, I think... <clears throat> Actually, double check. Yeah. There's 20 more Republicans than there are Democrats still in budget boost. Keep investing more money. And we got more stability from that, too. That's actually kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do this one because we can. Nice. So we have 24 Republicans, 16 Democrats. It wouldn't make any sense to beat like, beat down the Democrats. Wait, we're beating them. They will increase their support. Holding back the South. Yeah, if we can get most of the. Republicans and Senate MPP, we should be okay. Yeah. Rally the Republicans. The North and Steel Belt will approve. Grows a little more unified. Support among the MPPC will increase. The parties get more divided, but that's okay. And hammer out the language. Yeah, we gotta focus on this, this, this. Vote for the act. The clean government is the best government. Bending off big business. Cool. We're gonna rally the Republicans. With the Social Security program having begun the process of drafting, we've managed to build towards abiding the fears of American citizenry in regards to financial situations. We must stand resolute in our support and joy at the prospect of reaching out to all peoples of the U.S. with the ideas of the bill. Thus, then, we must rally support for our work throughout the states to maintain success. In particular, the Northern and Midwestern Republican branch, or the Republican Democrats, has been in celebration over the creation of such social security measures. And we must capitalize on our situation to increase public approval of our administration and ensure that the American people are confident in the controversial program. Doing so will allow the party to reorganize, consolidate, and expand, offering the administration a large amount of support and being able to continue advances towards the U.S.'s success. Which means, okay, I'll be honest here, it's June 71, we're not going to be able to get through this unless they use cons commands. Like, this stuff is cool and all. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see, because I'm pretty sure Glenn cannot run twice. So, I mean, I, I want to get to Mars. Like, I will get to Mars. I'll, I'll promise you that. We are going to get to Mars, one way or another. Like, at the time of this recording, there's not going to be any more Glenn content for a long time. So, we might as well enjoy the time that we have together and do the best we can with it. So... So we basically probably will have to use console commands, like what I probably have to do for my RFK run as well, because when you focus on Hawaii, apparently more than 
healthcare and social security and labor rights. Or did you just run out of time? Boy, 616 factories, that's not bad. That's not bad. We could cut construction spending, but now. Is are still building some civilian factories in Minnesota? The Minnesota people should like us in. Minnesotans. You call them Minnesotans? How about minis? That sounds a lot easier than Minnesota, but whatever. I, who, who do I know? I don't live there. Oh, maybe I do. You guys do live in Minnesota. Hmm. I've got to keep an eye on this. I keep forgetting that I need to keep an eye on this stuff. Hey, 58% done. Not bad. 30 for the 7. Yeah. Yeah, we want to get to at least 80%. So that would be good. And 0% again, of course. Well, we got 49 political power. This stuff is not worth it. 150 for 40. 45, you get 75. That's not worth it. 150 for 40? Yeah, no. 80 is not bad. 200. Honestly, this one's just siphon military funding would be better. We've already been caught once. Can they catch us again? They might be able to. Maybe not. Our friends in the center. While Americans across the nation remain divided over a plethora of issues, it's not without question that the possibility of success... Through bipartisan efforts is there, even if it's, it's hard to find. So it's done to reach out. The central branch of the MPP has remained steadfast in the desire to aid American citizens and empower the American worker, and with our steps towards the Social Security Act, we must reach out to our friends within the Center Party, Center National Progressive Party. Doing so will not only allow us to grant or garner further support on the bill, but also serves to end the fears of many Americans as well, as seeing the two parties which divide the U.S.'s political system working together will bring massive support for our administration. Even if opposition towards the bill remains lo vocal within our own party as well as the National Progressive Party, we must stand together as we are to see the empowerment of the American worker. We'll get through that as fast as possible. You know what? Let's test it. Can we get caught again? I just want to make sure that we have enough money for this stuff. Wait, would we even get, get impeached? We might be, get impeached. I don't know. Can Glenn get impeached? That's kind of cool. State of Israel, huh? Oh, oil crisis. Oh, they got some severe black market trading. How's the Syrian Republic doing? Oh, they're allied. Oh. Oh, you're all allied. Oh, with the Iraq and Syria and the... Saudi Arabians, with, which took over Yemen, apparently, and or annexed them or something. Abu Dhabi is even here, too. But no, not really. But the Far Rebellion, is that? Yeah, it is. Wow. The Shadam of Iran. I could send volunteers. I could do the focus that gives us volunteers. But uh, I think we're kind of okay. Let's just watch Iran fall. I mean, at this point, I'm just, like I said earlier, I'm so focused on getting the focuses done. Oh... Uh, Okay, the alliance collapses, so if they don't kill each other fast enough, they're just going to kill each other. Alright, well, whatever. What doesn't matter is... What matters is that we get through what we need to get through here. Because we want to get to space. If we can send a colony to Mars, or the moon, or whatever, then we don't have to deal with all this stuff. We'll say. Yeah. Just watching Iran die. Oh, and you have these people down here too, which I don't know. This must be bugged, because they're not doing anything. All they're fighting is the Imperial State, but everyone's fighting the Imperial State, so... Yeah. Let's get some artillery. Yeah, why not? Advanced artillery. Our friends in the center? Hammer out language on the bill. So, while we've managed to organize a supporting, uh, supporting base behind the creation of the Social Security Act, we need to get on work on the next most important part of the creation. The writing and contents of the bill itself, obviously. The bill is proving to be one of the most extensive social programs organized in American history, but we need to be effective in its wording and focus, so that we do not lose the program to, to inefficiency and bureaucracy. The paragraphs of the bill must be examined by the administration and experts alike to guarantee success. Furthermore, the bill has already proved to be controversial since its consumption, especially among the National Progressive Party's right-leaning branch, and so we must consider who this bill will end up going against and how to make it both successful and viable. Americans have long faced difficulties for their nation, and we are long overdue for a program created to pay them back for everything they have done for their nation. So we, it's high time to sit down and figure out what exactly this act should cover. Absolutely. Oh, there goes a Democratic Republic. Oh well, Iran. Oh well. Glenn's got other things to deal with than just some Iranian civil war. One, two, three, four, five, six-ish ways of the civil war. Hey, 0.31 political power day. Not bad. But now we can't get any more stuff. Oh, we should have saved it for that one. I didn't realize we would come back so fast. God dang it, I gotta keep looking at this. Ah! We still have 191 research points. God dang, maybe I should not have spent so many research points getting all this stuff done. What does it mean we can research oil now? Oh, wait, hold on. That must be liquid fuel. To subsidize or not to subsidize? President Glenn, all throughout his electoral campaign, pushed for the introduction of Social Security, an idea that was proposed and promptly defeated during the administration of J Kennedy Sr. In recent weeks, the president has been pushing for the reintroduction of this concept into reality. In accordance with his campaign promises, in a recent press conference, he said that he and his congressional allies were currently drafting a new Social Security bill. It is unclear exactly how far this new welfare bill will go, but if the President's comments during the campaign are anything to go by, it will likely prove fairly comprehensive and extensive. It will at least allow to cover all Americans over the age of 65 
years old and those who have disabilities which prevent them from working. There appears to be some debate among the Republican Democratic Party as exactly how strong these benefits will be. The more conservative congressmen in the party, mainly Democrats, have said that the taxes, uh, the retirement fund offered by the program should only be from the taxes and trusts that retirees put money into during their working years. The more liberal elements of the party, mainly Republicans, uh, claim that while the Social Security Trust Fund is an essential part of the process, there's simply not enough to cover the needs of most Americans in the twilight years and that the federal budget must be adjusted such that the government directly subsidizes the trust fund. Under this plan, Americans who claim Social Security will receive more than welfare claims than they put in while employed. Mm, I wonder what the birth rates are like right now, though. Should the president pursue the more comprehensive subsidized Social Security, the bill is anticipated to lose quite a bit of support from the Democrats, as well as receive a flat rejection for, by the far right, MPP. The bill is yet to be fully drafted, however, so the question remains how far will President Glenn go? All the way, public support will increase among Republicans in the center NPP. The voters in the North and Steel Belt and West approve. We've got to get how the Democrats have passed this bill. So, we currently have... I keep looking at this. 24 Republicans, 34 Senate MPP. If we just do us two, these two parties, that's enough. That is actually enough to, to get the bill passed through. 24 plus 34. But that doesn't mean every single one of these party members is going to be able to do it. We are... Oh, man. If we could get, like, one Democrat and maybe one far-right uh, MPP member, we could probably do it. We've got to have the Democrats pass a bill. We're going to risk it. All the white subsidized Social Security is necessary? Awesome. If we get all 24 and all 34, we're good. Okay, Italy. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, these are Germans are helping them out, I guess. I guess that's a good thing. Oh, they're fighting the French, too. Oh, boy. And uh, I don't want to forget. Nope, nope, nope. 25 political power. Oh, bring in technicians. Now we good. Hmm. Military austerity, you say? Coffee, you say? Tasty stuff. And the Islamic Republic of Iran has defeated the Democratic Republic. See? Bye-bye, democracy. Bye-bye. Oh, boy. looks like the imperial state of Iran might win. They're even beating up these guys up there. Oh, yeah, they're probably going to win. Oh, my goodness. A coverage conundrum. All right. In the process of hammering out the details of the soon-to-be-finished Social Security Act, President John Glenn has faced significant opposition to exactly how far the medical aid aspect of the program, called Medicare, will go. The president himself has made it clear that he supports a very strong Medicare system, in which all those over the age of 65 or suffering from a disability had their health care expenses met in full. This would likely require additional government subsidization of Social Security, and even angrier mob of conservatives in Congress. The Democrats, as can be expected, have proposed a more moderate but still comprehensive plan. In it, Medicare would cover only roughly 30-50% to 50 of health care expenses for eligible individuals. Wallace F. Bennett, generally considered the leader of the Democrats in the Senate, has declared that he will absolutely not support a Medicare plan that wastes so much money on coverage that the average retiree doesn't need. Some congressmen in the far-right MPP have expressed slight amiability towards the Democratic proposal, but it would be very clear that the President's position is simply unacceptable. Without much conservative support, there is, there is question as to whether the bill will pass at all. As such, the President and the party must take, make a choice between his desire to cover all health care costs under Medicare and his need for party unity and bipartisan support on the bill. Full coverage? Support will increase among Republicans and stuff? Politics is the business of compromise? Increase support among Democrats. Well, we're going to go full coverage. We're still going to try to go as far as we possibly can. Give you more political power. All right, national, national focus. And we'll, let's try to hold the act. Oh, God. If this doesn't go well, well, I'm going to force it through anyways using consequences. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see what happens. The administration, the cabinet, experts from a multitude of academic fields, people from a wide range of groups have met to discuss, debate, and finalize changes and amendments to the clauses of the Social Security Bill. Americans are ought are out there suffering are out there for suffering from their lack of financial confidence and will not get better without action. However, after months of work, the Glenn administration has found it to be the right time to introduce the bill to Congress to be voted into law. The various factions of the American government have already re relied or rallied to taking sides and made up their mind about the bill with hope the Congress of the United States ought to be more than willing to accept the act of care we have pieced together. And now we must move fast before our support is lost. Once American citizens stand proud for the administration or our administration with such success, we may move forward with the more pertinent projects as well and channel funding to the space administration later. Cool. Let's see, we can't do this yet. We got 12 days and 24, 34. Come on. Come on. 23, 34. We've got it. See, we don't need a compromise here. None of the far right cares. None of the Democrat cares. So basically, the Republicans and NPP are, can be sort of, as closely working together, the death of the Supreme Court justice, 
And then we have the Democrats in the far right, NPP, working kind of together as well. But sad news is coming over the wires. One of the most senior, most justices on the U.S. Supreme Court has passed away, a liberal. They wrote several notable opinions throughout their tenure, both concurring and dissenting. In addition, they were the swing justice in more than one case. However, with this solemn moment comes an opportunity to change the balance of the highest court in the land. We'll have to get the right nominee and manage the Senate process carefully, but if we succeed, it will be a major victory for our administration. Let's fill this vacancy. Well, technically, we are kind of progressive kind of liberal so if a liberal guy dies we'll probably throw in a liberal person in there too right land doctrine of course was finished a while ago armor 1970s armor nice yep 23 plus 34 all but one republican jeez come on that one guy why do you have to be that one guy sticking out oh we have 57 things there but that's nice controlled markets okay bye bye 0.31 not bad shot him of iran good luck good luck shaw you're gonna need it I told them they needed it. They didn't listen though. All right, seventy-five percent. We gotta, we gotta keep prepare the launch pad. We're at eighty percent. Jesus. And they'll go with joint testing program. That'd be good. Hey, actually, these guys are gonna die. The Baluki Liberation Front. Good luck, guys. Good luck. And after, this is the last piece of legislation we're gonna focus on because we could come down here. Clean government is the best government. Fending off big business, public support will increase. We get political power. Actually, would not be bad, but we don't have time for this. Ooh, daily political power, anti-corruption measures. Ooh, ban lobbying. Lose access to private sources of funding for NASA, which is fine because we actually already said no. Restrict lobbying. Increase NASA's budget by 125 million. Not all this funding is cleaning the city on the hill. Cool, but I promise you, we'll get down there no matter what. The bill will pass. I'm pretty sure. So, oh, we can't do that one. Come over here. ABCs. Very nice. And great job, Imperial City of Iran. Social Security Act. The question of boosters. As a rocketry program continues to develop, we must consider one of the most important questions to further our own development. Which type of propulsion do we focus our efforts on? The tried and true solid fuel, or the new and exciting possibilities opened up by liquid fuel? Which I already know the answer to, which I will get there. And socially secure. Exciting news from Washington today is President John Glenn's Social Security Act was officially passed through Congress, with the President himself expected to sign the bill into law within a week. The bill, largely based off of one proposed by the administration of Kennedy Sr., was nearly pushed in through by a vote hotly contested by the far-right MPP, while the more conservative Democrats among the RDs initially seemed hesitant to sanction such an expensive program. They quickly calmed down once they saw that the President was open to compromising on the issue. Under this new welfare program, all Americans over the age of 65 years of old and those grossly affected by disabilities are now permitted to claim a monthly financial stipend from the U.S. government. The actual moment, uh, amount of ass assistance given by the stipend varies from person to person, as it is based off of a percentage of taxes paid during a claimant's working years. Americans can breathe a little easier now. Voting support will increase significantly. Cool. Cost goes up. Ooh, tax havens with low income weighted. We get lose political power and stability. Private health care with public health care. And so basically we get that political power back. Ooh, we basically don't lose stability. Okay, cool. And it costs us more. Oh, God. But we get more monthly poverty change, choosing our Scottish nominee. In the current moment, the Supreme Court is moderately conservative. Many, both in the media and Congress, are urging us to select a nominee who would provide some ideological balance. The Supreme Court is ostensibly provided, supposed to be nonpartisan, but kept away from petty day to day politics. On the other hand, very few things in America are nonpartisan when you get down right to it. Picking a nominee who fits with their ideological outlook can ensure some real political victories down the line. Yet, on the other hand, it could draw the ire of those who aren't staunch members of our voting base. So, which option should we go with? A liberal nominee or a conservative one? We'll go with a liberal one, not a conservative one, because. Since at the same time as this, I played, I'm playing as RFK, and we'll probably choose a conservative one to make things a little bit, a little more balanced, I guess we'll say. Let's launch it. Come on, please don't fail. We cannot afford to fail. It's 80%. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Dancing among the stars. Our brave astronauts have escaped the bounds of Earth today as our latest rocket successfully left the stratosphere. People from all around gathered to see our boys off the mission, cheering as the rocket shot up and out of sight. Mission Control is constantly monitoring the situation. As of now, everything is proceeding as planned as a strong astronauts pair for the next stage of their journey. Keeping in frequent contact during the more critical stages of our mission will be some time before completion, but the mission outlook is looking bright. Almost every news channel, both foreign and domestic, has a dedicated segment for our mission. The world watches with delight as the frontier continues to be pushed back. 50% chance of getting 0.5 stability. And political power. More liberal democracy. Awesome. And what missions and rewards do we get? Hey, look. Joy testing programs. Don't mind if we do. Rocket status. Our rockets have been recovered. Oh. Our rocket is currently undergoing its mission. Active for 15 days. Recyclable fuel tanks. I would like to do that, but we're not doing unmanned missions anymore. Somewhat unified for America. Cool. If we can increase party unity, that'd be nice, but obviously we can't send volunteers. Oh, we can send volunteers. Oh. I guess we could have sent volunteers. 
Whatever. Cool. And we're getting more funding. We can only have over a billion. Nice. All right, can I send another mission, please? Uh, do we get mission rewards? It's been like a week. Oh, there they are. Okay. So if you want to read about this, go right ahead. But we get 40 research points and 15 public support from the manned mission. America's height lies with its astronauts. Amazing. Cool. We're going to do that again. Immediately do it again. Immediately. Hire technicians. 40 days, 40, 15, 30. Run diagnostic testing, 0%. That's not good. But whatever. 45 political power, not bad. I would like to have research points. More research points, please, please. Come on, John Glenn, you can please just. If we have to run another election, please do it. Oh man, the country's so split. Oh, yeah, Italy won again. So. What the heck? I mean, it's pretty disgusting. They haven't won completely yet, but. They probably will. Actually, what didn't Italy like take all this part and then they push them back? That's kind of cool. Come on, keep an eye on this stuff. The center and the left and PP are working together. I've never seen. Actually, I haven't spent that much time with America off screen, but like, I haven't seen too much of the left and PP. But liquid fuel. We're going to do liquid fuel because we want more uh, base preparedness for manned missions. Liquid fuel or liquid. Fuel rockets are an all-American invention. They have been co-opted by the Nazis for the V2 program, but they were invented by American Dr. G Robert Goddard, who decades before anyone cared about the name Von Braun. Patriotic sentiment aside, the Germans used them for good reason. Liquid fuel is far more efficient than so all due to the compressibility of liquids and a significant lighter rocket. We will beat the fascists at their own game and rise to the stars on a stream of burning liquid propellant. Absolutely. The storm of the Saturn, Saturn rocket booster. Another day, the White House was passing as President Glenn's had still had NASA at the forefront of his mind. He was so focused on space nowadays that he wondered whether he was in good fit for the presidency. Not like it mattered now, as what was formerly a distant future is now a nine Glenn's sight. It was his sole mission to bring his native country beyond the space threshold that contained his predecessors. He used the political space, or the potential space future of America, over some coffee before the phone at his desk rang to surprise it was a NASA official. Mr. President, we've been reviewing our Saturn project and we are close to finishing the heavy payload rocket you requested. Our engineers have been debating whether we should use liquid rockets since fuel for the booster or standard rocket fuel. We want to ask you since NASA's budget is growing tighter every day. The Saturn Project. This project was going to be the spark that ignites the country's interest in space, and the president would need to respond fast. Glenn knew how expensive or expensive liquid rocket fuel was, and if he were to choose this option, all NASA mission costs from now on would increase. This would help to further ensure a successful mission, but due to increased costs, the public would grow more unhappy. If we were to go with standard rocket fuel, the mission cost would decrease, but the base mission prep would also decrease. That certainly is an interesting question. I don't care about cost. The public early doesn't care for its 19%, but the hearing. Oh, what is this? Sweat was visible on the face as Davis tried to shuffle in his seat. He could cough slightly and lean into the microphone. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? The congressman sighed. Mr. Davis, I asked where the half billion dollars originally signed your project went. Davis replied, well, our payload required development of a modified lower stage M. How about the other 500 million? For the replacement after the original one came down in smoke, Davis paused and took a long drink from water next to him. Congressman, I wish I could say that every mission we launched was a complete success, but... The congressman leaned forward in his seat. No, that's not good enough. Your budget doesn't come out of nowhere. Every time your engineers blew up a rocket, you were wasting millions of the taxpayers' money. Davis shrugged to think of his response. He sat back and wished that he could be anywhere but here. This was just the first segment of the Senate's hearing on NASA's budgetary concerns. If you're just joining us, William Davis is a NASA administrator who has been called to speak before the Senate. We will continue to follow his stories as it develops. This and more tonight on CBS Evening News. Public opinion has continued to deteriorate, Mr. President. Almost every news station is covering this as Congress keeps pulling our failures to light. Even our own party is now suggesting that bigger cuts to NASA. Our citizens currently think that NASA is a waste of money, which is something that we cannot afford. We need to start changing the public opinion very quickly, or our astronauts won't be going anywhere. No. That's a bunch of crap. What? What do you mean? What do you mean we've had failures? Like, it's one thing to, like, ask where the money went, but we haven't, as far as we know, had any real rocket failures. We've only had, at least to the public, we've only had successes. I mean, come on. What the heck? If that's the case, I'm gonna, we're going to lose 75 political power. I'm going to spend money now. Might as well get more money, right? Oh, I hate this stuff. I think this this stuff has got to be looked at a little bit more. Just because this is a bit too much. With, with If you only have four years to launch stuff into space and try to get to Mars, that's basically impossible. Now, I understand that Glenn will probably get more content if he can run for a second presidency ever, if TNO2, when it TNO2 comes out, but this is a bit too extreme. It's almost to the point where you, honestly, unless you, like, have an extreme amount of support, you won't be able to get to Mars within four years. Like, we are literally rebuilding NASA up from the ground. 
because after Nixon's failure to, you know, get in the skies, you know, whatever, but still, like, I, I just hope that Glenn has a second term, because if he doesn't, we a little screwed. But I'll, use, I'll just use Consequent, it doesn't matter, like, we will get to Mars at the end of this campaign, one way or another. Oh, Italy, you just had to get involved, didn't you? Just had to get involved. But liquid fuel, and then dust off the plans, research points, Saturn V will be able to research. Surviving the cosmos. Many times in the US of America has ventured beyond the grasp of our planet's soil, many times it has been successful. However, our most recent plans of travel, not just beyond our world, but to grace others, are far more daunting and difficult challenges than the American space program has ever faced. Having never launched astronauts belong beyond low Earth orbit, we are all ill prepared for the dangers and difficulties in keeping them alive in space for more than a few days. Before we can begin the true work of getting to both the Moon and Mars, we must first surmount the challenge of ensuring that our brave solar sailors are alive when they actually reach their heavenly destinations. And we'll do that one as soon as we can, uh, we can so. Nice. And we got three more days. Yeah. We'll do that one first. Dust off the plant. The Saturn V. Cool. After that, we'll probably do dust off the plants and then the Saturn V. The stars beckon. Yeah. The lesson's a Gemini. Upgrading the infrastructure. Cool. The human stress tests. And there goes Italy. Taking out other people. Ooh, we want this. Our ma mission rewards and base preparedness. Uh, man missions will increase. I spent a lot of time actually focusing on ma on man missions, which, if you try this for your own self, that's a lot of debt. Wow, but probably it would be best to not do unmanned missions. I think from what I've read, so 59%. Hire some technicians because we're probably going to get as much as is possible. Uh, research oil. Well, well, we already did the oil thing, didn't we? Civilian budget boost. Whatever, just give me more political power every day. That's what we desire. Because right now, this is a bit a bit extreme. Like, all these hits of political power, you can't get anything done. Zero percent. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well. We'll get some there, somehow, some way there, eventually. Yeah, so we did liquid fuel. Is there... Oh, maybe fuel tank... Oh, there it is. Oh, fuel tank research. Not liquid fuel. Fuel tank research, okay. Reworking the capsule? Reworking the suit. Ooh, the election has begun. If you would like to read this, go right ahead. Okay, Italy. So, we're going to help elect the NPP. Because I want the R&D to win. Hmm. Improved insulation. Pinpoint thrusters. Cool. Great unknown. Upgraded transmitters. Ready for anything. Oh, it's already February 72. Oh, goodness. One small step. Oh, more daily pickle power? Oh, the largest nuclear stockpile. When the first nuclear bomb exploded in Hawaii, the world stood still in shock. For the first time in history, man had the capability to destroy itself at the turn of a key. And the touch of a button, the culmination of thousands of years of human achievement, art, architecture, science, politics, man could be destroyed in less than an hour. It was a power once thought unthinkable. Relegated to gods. Now a petty man atop a petty government holds the power. In fact, it has grown from something catastrophic but not apocalyptic to something one step closer to world ending. A terrifying development. Replace massive stockpile with apocalyptic stockpile. Nice. No one will threaten us again. At least we hope so. So let's go ahead and do human stress tests. Being, being in space is understandably harsh upon the human body, with the effects of zero G force and high amounts of radiation, not to mention the horrific sense of isolation wearing down on astronauts. Getting there can be even more stressful as the extremely high G forces during launch and re entry have the potential to scrap entire missions by knocking astronauts unconscious. In order to counteract these potential effects, we can harden our cadets by including high G force centrifuge, training isolation chambers, and simulation zero G exercises into their training regimen. Awesome. Don't mind me. Don't look at the debt. I know it's painful to look at, but don't look at the debt. No, I told you not to look at the debt. It's only $259 billion, That's all. Come on, GDP. Get higher. A new era of American space life. America, behind me stands a beacon of a new era. Behind me stands a blazing torch that will signal the beginnings of new forays into the stars. Behind me stands hope for NASA. Behind me is a prototype of a rocket that will hopefully one day carry Americans into space. The Saturn IB. It's a massive creation, but it also signals the start of something more, far more massive and far more important. It signals the start of America's domination of the heavens. So, some have asked me why we are even bothering with it. Why do we even still try to win some glory in space when Germany claimed it all those years ago? Why we try to win a race that is already over? To me, it was never a race. It was a quest for knowledge. It was a challenge to overcome. It was a mountain whose peak lay at the great beyond. And a glorious future for mankind. We're about to embark that quest once more for our country, for science, and for humanity itself. 
I will not lie to you, this reinvigorated quest will not come without difficulty. There will be some t setbacks, waste, and possibly, possibly even some tragedies. However, this is no time to abandon such a wretched goal. I ask you this. Did Washington give up when he s when stranded in Valley Forge? Did Lincoln give up when the South rebelled? Did the Wright brothers give up when, when told that a flying machine could not be built? No, they did not. America is a nation of indomitable will, and together we will show this world at will by ushering in a new era of American spaceflight. Ignition! Awesome. 58%. Got to keep an eye on the budget because it's looking not too bueno. 40 million. Testing the rockets. Yeah, we're going to be testing the rockets first. Oh, you get something else here? If only I had political power, but nope. You just can't get enough. 66% of the way there. Cool. 148 billion in terms of deficit, which is, I think, mostly from Social Security and healthcare, as well as the oil crisis. If we didn't have the oil crisis, we could be doing so much better. I'll be honest here. If I was Israel right now, I'd be kind of scared. Because you have the Italian Empire in, like, this area. And then you have Italian Egypt. And then to your right, or your east, you have the Italian Empire once again, directly ruling from here, which is actually interesting since they should be rumors of discontent. They're out of manpower. Uh-oh! Oh, boy. You took over this area by what cost? At what cost will you give yourself land and glory? Human stress tests? How about reworking the suit? The, oh, actually, let's do, dust off the plans. The reluctance of politicians to invest in the future of humanity is appalling. Rather than spend money for potential gains in the future, most would rather take the safe bet and remain at a standstill. Our president knows the value of science and scientific progress. However, and is willing to make bold and daring strides into the unknown and back it up with a budget to match. Our old facilities still have old plans and proposals for various products, including our own moon landing and other ambitious projects. Let's turn our engines, our engineers loose and see what they can come up with. Awesome. The new recruits, Houston, Texas, 9 a.m.? Cool, and that's actually a little bit ahead of time right there. Let's go ahead and do something else instead, such as this. Oh. Maintenance and its companies fours. Field Hospital Four. So, the President of the U.S. Staff's office is playing and onto the grounds of the country's new and improved astronaut training center. Instantly, the surge of nostalgia floods the former spaceman's head as the private tour begins. It seems like not long ago, this was the second home. Even with his new gadgets everywhere, the feeling of familiar familiarity still lingered. President Glenn watches the delight at the high-tech gravity rooms, the realistic flight simulators, and the country's future space marines operating it all. The President was glad that even with all the technological advancements, NASA's message stayed the same. It was time for lunch with the new recruits. Within a few minutes of conversation, Glenn could tell that these guys weren't as nervous about the great beyond as he was back in the day. If anything, they were nervous about talking with the president. But those feelings were gone after an hour. But Glenn speaks most, spends most of his time both reminiscing about his own experiences and marveling at all the up-to-date training methods. As the day progressed, President Glenn had to say goodbye to his new friends. As he boarded the planes for Washington, the man couldn't help but feeling ecstatic about the future of NASA with him at the helm. At the same time, though, a sense of dread was creeping up on him. If something bad were to happen, he, could, he would be solely responsible. If a missile accident were to cost him American lives, he would have to take all the blame. Glenn wondered whether or not his dreadful feelings would cause him to lose sleep. The future of space exploration is bright. Hey, 50 political power, thank you. Still not enough. It's really just not enough. Like, holy cow. It ain't ever going to be enough. 66%. We're probably going to go next with launch. Oh, no. 76, okay. Oh, God, we're going to be at only 81%. Oh, boy, that is not ideal. Can only really get 0.32 a day. That's not bad. 98% stability. We're a very stable nation. We got some more support, too. That's okay. How is uh, Germany doing? Redevelop the nation, huh? Das Entschildungsnetzwerk. Annual GDP growth factor. Ooh, civilian spending factor. Ooh, I like that. Unser Siemenswelt. Polls are updated. Ah, yeah, with the polls. What's going on with the polls? RDs, RDs. A lot of NPs, P's in the Deep South as well as the Upper South, as well as the Southwest, as well as the Great Plains and the Rockies and the West Coast. Oh, good lord. Oh man, that's not good. The Iran War. Yeah, that's bugged. Because the Iran War is over, so. Not sure what they want us to do about that, but whatever. Toss out the plans. The Saturn V. Our best scientists and engineers have come back with an old plan, to which they've made significant modifications. This, might, this mighty rocket is the largest one we've ever constructed, and it carries a hefty price tag to match. The Saturn I-1-4 to four rockets were originally designed just before the end of the U.S. space program in an effort to prepare for our own moonshot. And now our new design will carry Americans to the moon and beyond. There's still a further mod modifications to be made before putting it into production, but the work of the old NASA has made our journey much, much easier. And we'll, we'll do this one right now. Cool. 
It's so much easier to go through all these focuses when well, you don't have to worry about uh, war, but Ford debuts the Mustang too. Trends rise and falls, taste shifts with the times, and from this America's muscle cars are no less exempt. Where a decade ago, horsepower and size were prized qualities for the American car, and now they're seen akin to the white elephants of Thailand. The less of you from afar, but plain, just a big old pain to afford and maintain. With the oil war and hardships that brought America's taste have finally shifted in full towards fuel economy and cost. The now venerable Mustang would have suffered the same fate as a fellow burdensome beast were it not for the haste of its parent company's engineers. Plans were made in Dearborn to accommodate the gasoline rations and reigning economic slump to the car's designs. Lengths and widths were cut short, gas guzzling V8s replaced with compact I-4s, and frames modified to reduce noise and vibration as its dimensions shrink. Drawing from the failures with the Pinto, Ford set out to effectively downside their flagship muscle car into a form suiting the American family's increasingly tight purses. Then result is the second generation Mustangs with Mustang 2 is released with a plum today. Seemingly satisfied with this compromise between economy and style, men with means have gone out to purchase Ford's new old car and droves. As analysts estimate that Mustang 2's orders will reach more than 400,000 by New Year's. Wow. Hopefully foretelling that Ford's greatest success will continue succeeding for another decade yet. Yeah, improvise, adapt, and overcome. That's pretty cool. April 25th, million men in reserve, 28 political power. Oh, the Saturn. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, Vice Commissariat Niederlande, led by Van Gielkirchen. Oh, yeah, Bürgerkrieg. Oh. Against a German giant, huh? Apathetic people. Oh, the Dutch. Oh, the Dutch. An economy for Germany. Decaying value. Verzoiling. Huh. Okay. And busy ports, of course. Very, very, very incredibly busy ports, I bet. Uh, a couple a couple more days. How many more days for research? Oh, yeah. Good time we looked at that. Now let's go grab some interceptors, which I never use. But that's okay. That's a okay. Improved APCs. Forgot about that. Better APCs. Jet casts. Even better jet casts. Military austerity. Nope. There you go. 150 billion. That's all. That's all it is. Let's go ahead and rework the suit. The current American spacesuit designs are meant for short excursions into zero-g environs of low Earth orbit, and as such, are simply not equipped to handle long trips in space. Especially not walking on the moon. If we don't, if we not only want, god dang it, to send a man to the moon, but allow him to land there, two new spacesuits must designs must be commissioned. Firstly, we simply need a more modern, streamlined, general-purpose spacesuit, something that our astronauts will wear while in space. It will need to be relatively light, flexible, and unobtrusive, able to survive in low pressures and moderate conditions. The other variety of suit is more difficult engineering challenge. It would be our extravehicular, extravehicular suit. Expected to perform everything from short spacewalks to basic repairs to extreme lunar excursions lasting several hours. It must not be too heavy nor too bulky, as our astronauts must perform basic tasks like walking and sensitive tasks like manipulating specialized tools. This extravehicular suit will be one of the cornerstones upon which the future of American space exploration is built, and without it, we are going nowhere. Yeah... Go ahead and do that. Cool. Keep spending more money. It's only 153 billion in annual de deficit. That's okay. Don't worry. The future is going to be just like this, where we spend so much money that we have nothing left. Launch it. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. Ah, good. Forward on to heaven. Hey, joint testing programs. Don't mind if we do. Finally, we have enough political power to get some more money. So we're, okay, buddy. The Saturn V. Ooh. The Diana program and Ares project will be unlocked if available. Oh yeah, 221 political power or research points we should say. No support from the public. So apparently support from the public doesn't matter too much hopefully. And then we're probably gonna get an event smashing us down saying, hey, no. Ah oh, man. Proven Kale? Sal? Proven Sal? When is the next Research thing done. Five days, field hospitals. We'll probably go with engineers. Engineers are nice. They're pretty good things to get, right? Helps with urban attack and defense. That's kind of cool. Mission rewards. 40 more research points and 10 public support from the man mission. Awesome. Ooh, how many more days we got? Oh, uh, you might as well do another one like this then. Go and test the rocket. That's fine. That's fine. I wish we get more benefits to doing this, like more missions for the same thing. I wish we get more base preparedness, but whatever. It's fine. Whatever. Only 411 billion in terms of debt, that's all. It's worth it. Honestly, like, it's only. What is this from? Is this healthcare? Or is this, this healthcare? This is probably, yeah. Public healthcare, education, police, acceptable pensions, insurance, employment subsidies, oil crisis. 
But I will be right back real quick. My apologies about that, but we have the 1972 National Progressive Primaries. The National Progressive Party is holding their convention in Miami Beach, Florida, in the midst of one of the greatest cultural changes in American history that is riverbating through the party that has long prided itself as representing the interests of those left behind by their RDs. But the issues are now moving away from debates about civil rights for African Americans, extent of social welfare, or how to best defeat Japan and reclaim the lost Pacific territories. Now issues over homosexuality, abortion, drugs, and others are claiming the attention of all sides of the MPP in the end. None of the candidates are received enough delegates to win in the primaries, leading to a broken convention. The two leaders were Senator Henry Scoop Jackson of Washington State, leading the CNPP and advocating for social welfare programs, and Jean Kirkpatrick, congresswoman from Oklahoma and one of the strongest proponents and defenders of the neoconservative movement that is coalescing within the far-right NPP. However, it all comes down to the ballots of the delegates in the Miami Beach Convention Center. Convention Center. After a long, long day and night of voting, the chairperson is taking the stage to announce the results of the last ballots. Scoop the White House, she can win, no trick. We'll go with Jean. Because the other one, and we're going to play as RFK, uh, we, we will choose, or we have chosen, whatever, uh, Scoop. So, Jean Kirkpatrick, we've finished maintenance companies and improved insulation. The balanced vacuum of space is a place of extreme, seldom more true than in temperature. Without an atmosphere, there's no protective shield against temperature changes, so the temperatures a spacecraft experiences can range from a scalding 200 degrees Fahrenheit in sunlight to 300 degrees below zero in the shade. While in previous years, our astronauts would simply wear heavy pressure suits while in space, our future forays into the heavens will require a new solution. Astronauts cannot simply be expected to wear such bulky equipment for days or weeks on end. To counteract this problem, our crew modules will have to be equipped with the best installation available, such that they may survive both the icy and scalding regions of the void. Cool. And get some recon. Because that'll hop out in space, right? Reconnaissance into space. And over here, we are still doing this off. Saturn V, or, you know, 5. Uh, investing in the project, testing the rocket. Only 580 million. Uh, well, I guess we get for now we technically have enough political power or and money, but there's going to come a time which we will we will not. So, go ahead and do. Oh, pulse update. I don't care. Launch pad. Ooh. Yeah, I should have done run diagnostic testing or simulations really. That's okay though. That's okay. We have 25. Encourage private investments, but we need actually consumer goods, which we don't have right now. And the Republican Democrat primaries. Okay, cool. So Glenn can keep running. Delegates from all over the U.S. have arrived at Miami Beach, Florida, and the convention center there to inaugurate John Glenn as a Republican Democrat candidate for president. After four years in the White House, it's time for another presidential election so the whole country can determine if the incumbent deserves another term over its time for change. The primaries for the RDs was short and sweet this year as only one candidate emerged to challenge the president, South Dakota Senator George McGovern. However, like usual in American politics, it's next to impossible to beat an incumbent president in the convention, and McGovern's long shot attempt quickly fell flat, turning the RD convention into a coronation for John Glenn. Promising another term of prosperity and success, the president focused on his sights on the National Progressive Party, readying his party to take him on four more years. We should be able to win. I'm, I'm, honest, I'm honestly pretty gosh darn confident that we will win. So, and obviously we're campaigning for the MPP and doing nothing about it, so that's kind of okay too. Before we do that though, let's go ahead and do run diagnostics tests so we get some more preparedness. That'll be good. We could launch it. It's only 70% though. Once we get this one done, we should have like 85% or 80% and then we'll launch it. So, yeah. I'm not sure how many more Republicans we can get, but hopefully we can get more. RDs are strong. RDs, of course, MPs. We saw this a little earlier too. MPP is looking pretty strong in all sorts of different places. But if we can't win... Well, then we'll just use console commands, which I hope we don't have to. I really hope we don't have to. We use, already, we use it once in this campaign just to get Glenn anyways, which has been okay, but still. The Great Unknown. Who on who knows what lies beyond that minuscule coil of Earth's influence? Who knows what dangers lie above the Earth in the great boundless void that surrounds all? Who knows what dangers we may encounter when we hit that void? If the American space program is to be prepared for a landing on the moon and eventually Mars, we must harden our system against damage. We must prepare for every eventuality, from communications failures to solar flares to radiation to cabin fires. All these potential problems and more must be planned for. There must be a backup for every possible system and a protocol for every possible disaster. Absolutely. You don't want things to go poorly. Gemini Mark II. Increased base preparedness? Yes. We have 221 research points. We have so many. It doesn't even matter now. I just want to spend them. That's all. I just want to spend them. That's all I want to do. And please, no one calls World War III. Actually, probably in the next episode, once we can get to Mars, hopefully, and we still have the same focus tree as Glenn, which it should happen, right? It's still the same president. What should happen is that we could potentially end up in a nuclear war against Germany and the maybe in Japan because of uh, the nuclear path that we have laid before ourselves. And don't look at the debt. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about it. Seriously, don't. I am, but whatever. Cool. I guess we start re reading the next one. Upgraded transmitters. Get some research points. Fuel tanks. Let's do this one. A fuel tank is a rather simple thing. Perhaps the most important simple component of any space-bound vessel. Obviously, without fuel, a rocket will not fly. And to reach the moon and Mars, a rocket will need an extraordinary amount of it. As such, it becomes necessary to take a step back and re-examine our fuel ta tank designs. Tweaking and certain elements to create the most optimal design possible. Certain features such as advanced alloys for more robust construction as well as more sheathing and insulation for electrical components will allow our rockets to be much safer. More, most important, however, is weight. For when the cost of launching a pound of payload into orbit may be in excess of $1,000, it must be considered to ensure that we can launch for more, we can launch more for less. Investigating lighter materials from which to construct our fuel tanks may prove worthwhile. Research new fuel tanks, hopefully. All right, go ahead and, oh. Go and launch it. I think it's pretty close. Dancing among the stars, forward onto heaven. Beautiful. We get 50 more political power. Be oh, I got 25 more. Joint testing programs. Yeah. That's the way we do it. So I guess I was complaining earlier that we didn't have enough. But I think we do have enough political power, at least money for now. Exploration has been the crucial in the development of humanity. Ever since the first human diaspora, our curiosity has driven us to explore every inch of the globe and then some searching to advance our own mind to feed that of sense of adventure. As society progressed, as the mighty Romans advanced into foreign territory fearlessly, boldly, they were looking for a home, a place to settle after the war. Likewise, we saw conquistadors bridge the gap between the new world and the old world. People like Christopher Columbus delivering the very continent we live on today. Other explorers spread their knowledge across the globe, permitting entire civilizations to connect for the first time, or people's manifest destiny shaped our country into the superpower it is today. Even much of our ocean remains unexplored. But now is the time for us to shift to our focus to the stars. As the Earth edges closer and closer to nuclear annihilation, we know little about the great beyond. In our current state, there is no hope for human progression. As long as we stay here, unable to quench our thirst for adventure, we must rally America to meet the upcoming challenges and reach for the stars head on, lest we fail and plunge into the fires of a deceased Earth. There's no hope to be found in space. There is hope. There is hope. Not no hope, but there is hope. Yeah, no, don't want to send the wrong message. 150 million. Yeah, for double the political power cost, siphoning military funding is just the way to go. And only 3% of the public really uh, has a positive approval rating of us. That's not good. But I don't care. No one cares. We only have half a trillion dollars in debt. It is what it is. Yeah, no, that's okay. Our de deficit to income ratio is only 83%. I'm going to blame it all on the oil crisis. Uh, at this point, I'm not going to invest any more into the political power for now. I think we're doing okay. Mission rewards, great. America's site lies with its astronauts. Cool. And military police. Cool. This way we get less political power, but the debt won't increase nearly as much. Oh my goodness. The 72 election debates, Kirkpatrick versus Glum. While urban machines exchange deals for votes and committees arrange donation drives and canvases as they always had, America's pu public, voting public speculated the quadrennial tradition's most recent addition in the comfort of homes all the nation over. At Walnut Street Theater in Pennsylvania, Penn Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, National Progressive candidate Gene Kirkpatrick engaged a Republican Democratic counterpart John Glenn in the first series of a televised presidential debate covering topics both foreign and domestic. Below is an excerpt of the heated exchange that night. Kirkpatrick says, $25 billion on space exploration and nowhere else. Miss Kirkpatrick, the nuclear plants and welfare programs we set up say otherwise. I can at least sign my budgets with a clean conscience if nothing else and with thoughts of a destiny greater than myself. Yours, as I understand, has barely any room for either. Voters side with Glenn. Yes, they do. And we'll get through one more focus before we finish the Godfather releases. Uh, acclaimed director Francis Ford Coppola's newest, biggest feature film, The Godfather, struck like lightning at theaters across America. Based on Mario Puzo's best-selling crime novel of the same name, The Godfather tells the story of the Corleone family of New York City's most powerful organized crime syndicates. It's Don Vito Corleone is an honorable and respected Sicilian immigrant. His position among New York's five families is always being threatened by the growing heroin trade. This conflict spires into a bloody gang war which claims Sonny. Vito's eldest child, after Vito promises to end the war, his second son, Michael, a veteran of Scotland, begins to take control of the Corleone Empire. In 55, Vito dies, and Michael exacts his revenge on the five families in a vicious series of assassinations, establishing his status as a new godfather of the Mafia. The Godfather's garnered rave reviews. Critics around the country are praising the performances of the legendary Marlon Brando's Vito, and the budding young Al Pacino's Michael. Others have acclaimed the score, editing, and themes of the immigration of families seen as a parable for America's complicated history to Italy, or relationship to Italy. <coughs> Many are already calling The Godfather the best film of 1972. It would seem that Mr. Capella has made Hollywood an offer to can't refuse. Ave Maria, gratia plena. Cool, and one more focus after this. Well, we get some advanced, advanced jet fighters. Let's grab some North American B-70 Valkyries. Holds 23,000 kil kilograms of ordnance. Not enough. 
and we shall finish with upgraded transmitters. No great achievement of humanity was done in silence. All of mankind's creations, from the Great Pyramids of Giza to the Great Wall of China to the torture of the new colossus that beckons the huddled masses into liberty. Uh, are a consequence of our new unique ability of communication. A lunar landing is easily on par with such spectacular moments of our species, and thus no different in terms of needing communication, most especially regarding contact while the mission is in progress. To ensure that we remain connected with our astronauts during our next forays into the stars, we will upgrade the majority of our Earthbound transmitters, as well as develop new comm systems for our new capsules, or crew capsules. Without the help of ground control, they will get nowhere after all, from the highest heaven to the deepest nether. They will travel farthest to travel together. A lack of imagination, public outcry continues as a nation questions NASA's methods. More protests have occurred outside NASA's headquarters in Washington, D.C. Protesters have been spotted supporting signs with more money down here. We don't want to fund your failures and other similar slogans. It remains to be seen if President Glenn will heed any of these protests, but members of the Congress already confirmed plans to move more of NASA's budget to the other programs. All this and more tonight on the CBS Evening News. We can't much last longer like this, Mr. President. These a-holes on the street can't see the forest for the trees and are convinced that we are burning piles of their money. Our opposition and Congress are out, of course, lapping all this up. It won't be too long now before NASA is crippled by a bunch of cuts. If you want to see another term in office, the nation needs to be convinced that all this funding has been worth something. We can't afford any more failures now. Oh, crap. That sucks. Oh, that really sucks. Come on, man. This is for America. And... Okay, Mountain Infantry, hello. Well, 72, grab some of this. Nice. Fuel tank research. And upgraded transmitters. And we will end today's episode there. Ooh, and we are ready to do the Diana program. Cool. It'll take... Our manned missions will allow to put the tragedy of the Apollo behind us and get to the moon. It'll take three successful Diana missions to get to achieve that goal. Yes, it takes too much. So, regardless, we shall end it there and get some of this. Ooh, that's okay to do. We might as well. But, hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we don't worry about the debts and continue to shoot for the stars. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.